uh, we're probably the only one that's actually developing our own wood source right from a log right to a pellet. How long has uh, Penner Forestry Products been in existence? Uh, we've been involved in the, the forestry logging side of the business probably since the mid-50s. It was actually started off uh, my father and my uncles needed some work. They were operating a dairy farm and decided to get involved in do some harvesting of, of lumber in the winter when they needed work. So was all that timber here in the southeast? Initially they didn't have any timber quotas but since uh, probably 60s and 70s we've acquired an awful lot of timber cutting rights in southeastern Manitoba and we've been involved uh, yeah, since the mid 50s. And so initially what happened to the lumber that you harvested? Well I, for many years we ran a a dimensional lumber operation where we sold uh, studs for primarily for, for housing. Uh, that market had some very, very many difficult years and we actually went out of it probably I'm guessing 20 years ago and slowly got into building wood pellets. We've been building, building pellets now for probably 20 years. What's happening in this building? We used to purchase about two-thirds of our wood. We remanufactured it and today we're actually producing all of the wood that we need for our pellets and it's basically going from, from log to lumber. Uh, it enters the mill, and a minute to a minute and a half later, we have a finished board. We're probably one of about three major companies in Manitoba that manufacture wood pellets. The other two major companies are actually recycling and dismantling old pellets. There's always the waste that we have to deal with. is a, a big part of uh, any kind of a lumber uh, operation, how to deal with it efficiently and effectively. It can, be, it can be very costly to get rid of, and yet it can also be uh, turn into a, a, a good revenue source in the form of sawdust which is being sold off primarily for animal bedding and uh, the bulk of the slab waste is actually being ground up and uh, going into the uh, colored uh, landscaping mulch market. On a day-to-day -day, how many trees does it take to keep uh, a place like this running? We're probably at the initial stages of production budgeting about 40 cords a day and then uh, we hope to get up upwards of double that and so this is still coming from active logging operations that you have uh, in the southeast here? We have a separate company operating as, as Southeast Logging. Uh, they're actually the logging component of the company and they're, they're pro pro providing our logs for the mill. It's amazing when we you drive from Winnipeg to Steinbach and it's a typical prairie scene. You drive south of Steinbach, there's a lot of timber, but it always seemed to me a wood company needed huge trees. Well actually our, uh, our, our sawmill operation is actually designed to handle uh, uh, logs ideally from 8 to 11 inches in, in diameter. I'm sure that uh, the, the way stuff gets moved around a pellet doesn't only get used once. I'm sure you'd find these things probably all over the world. Well, a lot of our pellets actually end up being shipped out of the Canadian marketplace. In the food industry, for sure. In the peat moss industry, uh, the bulk of those pellets end up uh, down in the U.S. somewhere. For those of us that live here, we know there's a forestry industry in this part of the province, but for many people they don't. We think we're all about basically farming and, and servicing the farm industry. Neat to see that there's a whole timber sector, and you're the company that's making it happen. Well, I guess we don't give up too easily. We were involved in the dimensional lumber industry. The industry's had many years of tough times, low market prices, and we, I guess we found a bit of a niche uh, in being able to develop our wood products.